What's up, fellas? If you are in a fantasy football league, you need to know this. I've drafted over 30 teams so far and cannot believe what I'm seeing. Here are the seven running backs that are going far too late in drafts. Starting with Leonard Fournette, who is going as the running back 12. He just re-signed a three-year, $21 million deal. And if you scroll over here on SpotTrack.com, out of that $21 million, $12 million in guaranteed money. That's 60% of his contract guaranteed. Now check this out. In weeks two through 15, Leonard Fournette was the RB3 overall. But there's more to this story. Story. I use week two because week one he wasn't the full-on starter and he didn't play the last couple of weeks of the season but in between this weeks he actually missed a week if you were to take that out as well he would finish as the RB2 only behind Jonathan Taylor in fantasy last year and if you look at his game logs he had five or more targets for a running back is very good in 86% of his games last year including having seven or more in the final five weeks of the season only DeAndre Swift saw more targets per game than Fournette which is implying that he out targeted Najee Harris Austin Eckler and Alvin and Kamara and all three of those men go before him in drafts now Josh Jacobs is a top value as the 23rd running back off the board he is being drafted as of right now after Travis Etienne and Antonio Gibson even though Gibson's in a three-headed backfield where he's not seeing targets and Etienne is coming off of injury where his offensive line is not the greatest you are drafting Jacobs right now at his absolute floor he has 1200 or more yards every single year he's been in the league I mean get a load of these schmacks fellas only five running backs have more yards than Jacobs since he entered the league in 2019 however the number one question to ask yourself fellas is will Zamir White in the fourth round drafted this year take touches away from Jacobs and the answer to that question lies within Kenyon Drake. Drake missed the final 30% of the games last year with an injury, and he ranked outside the top 50 in running back efficiency last year. He was an inefficient backup. It's It sums up to this. I'm, I'm sorry, Kenyon and your family. Hopefully you're not watching this. Still better than me running backs in the NFL by far, but Zamir White was drafted to take touches away from Kenyon Drake as the backup for this year, not Josh Jacobs. Next up, Chase Emmons is being drafted after, and way after, he's going as the RB35, way after Damian Harris, who's going as the RB29. Even though he's ranked top eight in running back efficiency the last three seasons and now he finds himself playing for Mike McDaniel which if you don't know is the former San Francisco 49ers running back coordinator from 2017 to 2020 and ring 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 the dollar is in this year if you're drafting him because Mike McDaniel had that San Francisco's 49ers rushing offense rushing attack bussing as the number one rushing efficiency offense during that time now let's give a congratulations a golf clap all of that because Chase Edmonds earned himself a new contract he's in Miami two years 12 million dollars and of that right now more than half of it is guaranteed and that's a good amount of money for a running back in the nfl these days it's not the top tier contracts but it's still very good it's two times more than anybody else on the dolphins including the new ad sony michelle i'm sorry i'm just not going to be afraid of this backfield raheem mostart has missed 73 percent of his games the last two years and is 30 plus years old sony michelle was just a late ad because no other teams wanted him and he was highly inefficient last year michelle ranked 50th in yards per touch last year that's how inefficient this guy was and chase Edmonds, since he's entered the NFL has been top 10 in this metric. Edmonds will operate as the running back one for Miami and the number one running backs last year saw over 16 opportunities per game. The most underrated running back right now in drafts is Melvin Gordon. He's going as the 36th running back off the board, which is after and well after the rookie Kenneth Walker. Even though Walker's touches aren't that secure, Rashad Penny is there. He was the number one efficiency running back last year. There's still a chance Chris Carson returns and Walker has not yet at least flashed receiving ability. As opposed to Melvin Gordon, who saw 203 carries last year, year and 28 receptions those 231 combined touches were top 15 that's secure touches top 15 in the nfl and melvin gordon scores touchdowns i mean almost every single year hitting double digits besides one he averages 11.2 touchdowns per season and now he has russell wilson commanding this offense you don't think that's going to stay pretty consistent and the big rebuttal will be but javante williams is there that is fine i love javante i think he can finish as a top 10 running back that doesn't take away from melvin gordon being able to finish as a top 25 running back this is about value not how he compares to Javante Williams. It's about how he compares to guys going around him like Kenneth Walker and Tony Pollard and Devin Singletary and James Cook and these other guys around him that, in my opinion, aren't going to beat him. And by the way, if you want all my rankings that I'm using for best ball and mock drafts, they're free down below in Discord right now. This man, Darrington Evans, was recently released by the Tennessee Titans, making rookie draft pick Hassan Haskins a major value. Haskins was selected in round four of the draft, and he showed top 1% in this draft class strength. These 27 reps were 30% more than the next closest running back at the draft. That fits perfectly with this Derrick Henry-led rushing attack with Mike Vrabel, strength, power, run the damn ball.
all. This backfield is clearly led by Derrick Henry, but Haskins is really easily going to fit into the running back two spot here. And last year, if you don't recall, Derrick Henry missed the final 53% of his games playing in just eight games last year due to injury. And now Derrick Henry is 28 years old and only Ezekiel Elliott has more touches than him since 2017. There's always a chance that Haskins sees more work this year. Next up, you're going to want as much JD McKissick as you can get. McKissick just re-signed a two-year $7 million deal with more than 50% of that $3.6 million guaranteed. And those Buffalo Bills offered him a contract showing that there was demand in the marketplace. He was supplying that demand in JD McKissick. Now McKissick is going as the 57th running back off the board. This is a mistake. He's going after rookie Brian Robinson and Terry and Davis Price. Both guys are third round rookies. Neither of those guys have a defined or set role in their offense or really even a pathway to it while as McKissick has a clear role. McKissick ranks top five in running back receptions the last two years. He finished second in 2020 and then in 2021 he finished 12th. And the only thing holding him back from finishing higher last year was that he missed five games with injury. He actually had more targets per game than Aaron Jones and Dalvin Cook last year. And his new quarterback Carson Wentz targeted running back 7.2 times per game last year people forget that Jonathan Taylor was running everywhere he was still targeting a bunch of guys out there Taylor Naeem Himes and those 7.2 times per game was top 10 in the NFL now this handsome man right here you know him as Saquon Barkley I'm matching him right now we went to Penn State together he's a great guy a great athlete but there is one big issue he has missed 43 percent of his games since 2019 and the main running backs behind Saquon on the depth chart are Matt Breida Gary Brightwell a rookie from last year and Antonio Williams and somehow Matt Breida is going as the 72nd running back off the board, which means he's going undrafted, and this is a mistake. Breida is the clear running back two on this depth chart. If you take the remaining running backs, which is two fullbacks, so let's X them out, Gary Brightwell and Antonio Williams, they have a career 15 touches in the NFL. It does not compare to the experience or talent as Matt Breida. This is Devontae Booker. He was the running back last year for the Giants when Saquon Barkley was dealing with injury. And if you scroll down, you can see he had 145 carries and 45 targets. He had 190 opportunities. Now, if you were to split this up between what happened when Saquon was in and when Saquon was out, it looks even better. When Saquon was active, Booker averaged 9.2 touches per game. So that's solid. But when Saquon was inactive, he averaged 19 touches per game. Immediate RB1 upside. So yeah, Matt Breida at the RB72 last spot in your draft pick them up on waivers has guaranteed work plus upside on top of that so fellas now you can take advantage of the fact that these running backs are going far too late in drafts and if you want to see which wide receivers are going far too late so you can take advantage beat your league mates all that type of stuff check out this video right here